Hello and welcome to Proving Identities. Now what are Proving Identities? Let us first try to understand. All the rules of replacement which we have studied in this course uh, can be proved using the uh, rule of uh, strength and conditional proof. Now how it is done? What is the method? And uh, what are the intricacies in that? And uh, how to solve them? And so on. We will be discussing. What I am doing is that I am dividing this lecture into two parts. In the first part of the lecture, we will be taking simple questions, simple questions I will say, because uh, there is not much to do, but uh, then what we need to do is that we need to read between the lines, because it is very important to read between the lines and try to understand that what is going to be the assumption, so that we can come out with a kind of conclusion which will be required. So that is the idea of uh, doing proving identities. Now, <clears throat> if you ask me, so we know that there are 10 rules of replacement. We know that there are 10 rules of replacements and these uh, rules uh, we can solve all of them except one that is material equivalence. We will not be able to solve material equivalence. The rest of them we can solve. Why we cannot solve material equivalence you will eventually understand it. But um, if you ask me and if, if you ask me a uh, simple answer for this because we will be using material equivalence every time. Now how does it stops us from solving material equivalence because whenever we will be proving uh, any of the identities what we do is that we will be taking uh, 18 rules that means all the rules of inference we have nine of them and we will be taking the other rules of replacement apart from the rule of replacement which we are planning to solve at that point of time. Now, um, this may sound trivial, this may also sound a little bit uh, different or uh, it is not easy for anyone to initially understand this that what is it, why uh, or how it is proved and this and that. So let us take an example to understand <clears throat> that how we are doing these uh, identities or how we are proving these identities, right? Uh, like let us start with a very simple question. Uh, the question can be like we know that p dot q this is equivalent to q dot p right so p dot q is equal to q dot p this is the rule of commutation now if we are asked to prove this that how will you prove that p dot q is equivalent to q dot p one way of answering it is that we need not prove it because it is an identity but then if it is asked that uh, how you will prove it so we can show the equivalence of it with the help of truth tables that is one of the ways but then as i told you the truth table is a decision procedure it's not a proof and if suppose somebody asks us to prove it using natural direction method that means the rules of inference the rules of replacement the conditional the uh, indirect proofs the strength conditional proofs and so on so we can prove all of these identities using strength and conditional proof now how to do it uh, i will give you this is a very simple one so you will understand the uh, way in which it is uh, done. So once you understand this, then it will be easier for you to <clears throat> take charge of how these questions are done in a little bit difficult ways as well. Now let's start. Uh, if we are asked to prove p dot q is equivalent to q dot p, so they will say that you need to prove p dot q equivalent to q dot p without using the rule of commutation, right? Because if you are using the rule of commutation, then definitely and uh, commutation rules are uh, two, two rules, right? P dot Q is equivalent to Q dot P. This is one and P wedge Q is also equivalent to Q wedge P. So we cannot use either one of them, right? None of these, <clears throat> neither we can use this nor we can use this. Even if we are proving this, even if we are proving this, we cannot prove or we cannot uh, take this. And if we are uh, proving this, we cannot take this as well. So both of them will be uh, not taken or both of them cannot be taken. So how to solve it? Now let us try to understand the way, how, how we do it. And then you will understand that what are basically the things which we need to keep uh, in our minds. Uh, P dot Q uh, is equal to Q dot P. So the idea is that we need to take P dot Q as an assumption and we need to reach Q dot P right and if we put the closure so we will get p dot q is uh, implying q dot p so this is one of the things then we also need to take q dot p as an assumption and we need to create p dot q so we will get uh, q dot p is 
implying p dot q and then once we will be doing the conjunction of these two so we will get the answer that is the idea now how to do that okay so let us try to do it uh, do this question with the help of uh, still in conditional proof <clears throat> so our first assumption is like p dot q because this is my assumption if i can create p dot uh, from p dot q to q uh, i can reach q dot p so my task will be easier okay now since i do not know or i i cannot use commutation so it is not fairly simple but still it is simple uh, let us see what we can do on line number 2 what i can do is that i can put a double negation right on p dot q so i will say that on first i have put double negation fine so this is quite simple you will understand eventually what i am planning to do <clears throat> third i keep one of the negation outside and i operate the negation inside so i will get this this is de morgan's law so this is also something which we understand now we cannot replace these positions right replace these positions definitely we cannot replace the position or else we will be using the commutation but if you read the rules of uh, replacement you will see that the position of atoms if i call p or q as an atom so the position of atoms change uh, in transposition as well and for transposition we need an implication so i can create an implication out of it and once i will be creating the implication i can reverse the positions with definitely the negations which will be developed so i will do that on line number four what i will do i will make it p implies negation q right because i can do that so this will be third material implication you can also write double negation because there will be a negation which will be developed over here uh, line number five i will keep the negation over here and what I will do, I will put it as double negation Q implies this, right? So this will come. So this double negation I am removing because it will not matter. So I will write on 4, I have used transposition and I have used double negation, right? So I will get this. <clears throat> uh, now, if you use... Uh, material implication again so you will get negation of q which negation of p right so it will be on 5 material implication on 7 i will use this negation inside i will uh, use the de morgan's law so i will get double negation q which double negation p so i can remove this double negation from here and this double negation from here so i will write 6 de morgan's law and double negation so i've got this and uh, or i'm doing something oh okay so this will be q dot p sorry because this uh, wedge will be turned into uh, dot so now you can see that from p dot q i have got q dot p so once i will put the closure over here on line number eight so from p dot q i have received q dot p so this is one part of the question right so similarly i need to do or i need to uh, take q dot p on say line number nine and then i have to solve the same thing so maybe say somewhere around line number 16 i am getting q dot p implies p dot q with another assumption like i have taken q dot p as an assumption line and with that i have created p dot q it will be exactly the same steps right so you can understand now that it will be quite a simple exercise so on line number eight i have got p dot q implies q dot p on line number 16 i have got q dot p implies p dot q so on line number 17 i can conjoin them p dot q implies q dot p so this will be one line and this will be q dot p implies p dot q this will be another line and once I have conjoined them, say 8 and 16 conjunction. So on line number 18, I will get P dot Q is equivalent to Q dot P. Right? So this is the idea. And I will write it on 17 material equivalence. So this step will always be done. And since this step 
is something which we will always be doing. So we cannot prove material equivalence uh, without using material equivalence. Or at least I do not know how to prove material equivalence without using material equivalence. Because material equivalence will be something which we will be using eventually at the end of the uh, proof. Right? So that is the thing which I wanted to bring to your attention. <clears throat> now this is how this question is done. It is fairly, fairly, fairly simple. It is one of the simplest questions which you can do. But then you need to understand the idea. There are a few more things or few more ideas which I will like to bring again to your notice so that whenever you need to develop certain things, you can understand that how these things are done, right? Uh, some basic ideas I have discussed already in the class, but still we can discuss it again here. Suppose you need to develop P, right? So the idea of developing P is that you take negation P and you create P. So if this is going to come, so negation P implies P. So this will be double negation P wedge P. So it will be P wedge P. So it will be P. So this is the thing that this is how you develop a single variable, right? So this is the idea. Now, suppose if you have to develop uh, P wedge Q, okay? So if, if, if you need P wedge Q. So you take negation P and you create Q. So you will get negation P implies Q. So you will develop P wedge Q, right? It will be double negation. So it will be P wedge Q. So this is another thing because you need to understand that how to create certain things. Suppose you need to develop P dot Q, right? One of the ways is that you can uh, create P like this, then Q, again like this, negation Q and then Q, and then conjoin them together. That is one of the ideas. Or another idea is you can take negation of P dot Q and create P dot Q, right? So with this also, you will get negation of P dot Q implies P dot Q, which will eventually become P dot Q, you know, the process, right? So if you see, you can create uh, a single variable, you can create implications, you can create, you know how to create integration, this is P and you suppose if you have to create P implies Q, so this is the process, so it is, it goes without showing. Uh, you also know how to create P wedge Q. Now suppose if you have to create um, negation P, now how to create negation P, suppose negation P is something which we require. So we take P and we create negation P. So it will be P implies negation P. This will be negation of P, wedge negation of P. So this will be negation of P. So you can create negation. So you can create negation. You can create conjunction. You can create disjunction. Disjunction. You can create integration. And if you need to create equivalence, so you just need to take one part, create the other part, then one integration, uh, say the other part, then the other part, create the first part, and then you will get the conjunction of these two things will become uh, P triple bar Q, right? So these are certain things which I wanted to bring to your uh, notice. Now, these are certain things which you have to keep in mind because the question like uh, P dot Q is equivalent to Q dot P is the simplest question which can be asked and it is something which is very simple, right? You, if you remember that there is a rule of transposition which also changes the position of atoms apart from commutation. So you will get the idea and you can create it very nicely. So um, with this, you can uh, um, attempt questions like uh, um, expo uh, exportation, uh, try uh, for yourself how to uh, solve exportation. You can also try to solve uh, association, right? So you can try exportation, you can try uh, association. Uh, these two, you can try and see whether you can solve it. So in the next part of the lecture, when we will meet, so we will solve a few difficult questions like uh, De Morgan's law or distribution and so on. Thank you.